Communication question 2. Explain why the cosine of an angle in a right triangle is not greater than 1, but the tangent can have any value. Well, that's a very important question when we are trying to understand trigonometric ratios, right? It kind of gives you the range of your trigonometric ratios, sines, cosines, and tangent. So to understand this, let's look into our right triangle. So here is our right triangle. And let's assume that this is 90 degrees, okay? So whenever we are talking about these trigonometric ratios, somehow we get back to a right triangle, right? And we'll name this as ABC as usual, okay? And now since the triangle is ABC, the sides should also be lowercase abc. So a opposite small a, small a opposite angle a, and then we have this as b and this side as c. So that is our triangle and by default we will use angle a for our discussion. So we say explain why cosine of an angle in a right triangle is not greater than 1, but tangent can have any value. So there are basically two parts to this. First, consider what is cosine of A, right? And then we'll see whether it can be greater than 1 or not, right? So we are saying what is cosine of A. So that is what prime consideration is for us. Angle A is this and cosine is what? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Perfect. Now, adjacent side is AC. So we say, well, it is AC or side B over the opposite side of angle C is the hypotenuse is C, right? If you consider any right triangle, you know, which is the longest side? C is the longest, right? You know, C is always greater than B. Perfect. C is always greater than B. Right. Since C is greater than B, denominator will be greater than B. And if denominator is greater than B, we get a fraction which is less than 1. That's how it is. So in a triangle, cosine has to be less than 1, right? There could be a situation when I can make a flat triangle, right? I can bring it down to a level of 0. In that case, C becomes equals to 1 and cosine becomes 1. So 1 is probably the closest value cosine can have. So what we see here is that the cosine of an angle is really dependent on this adjacent side, this side, correct, this side. As the side increases, uh, cosine increases. As the side decreases, cosine decreases, correct? Now, let's look back into this triangle. Let's assume that we started making an angle. Right? So let me start fresh now. Let me start fresh here. And let's make another, rather than spoiling the old picture, let's make another triangle here. Let us start making our triangle from here, right? This is our initial arm. So always an angle, we have an initial arm and a terminal arm, right? Let's say, let's say this is a terminal arm moving. Okay. So let's say this is our initial arm, right? Let's say this is a point A for us. And from here, we make this initial arm. At this moment, you know, think this is a triangle. And that time, angle A is zero, right? In that case, we know our adjacent side is equals to to the hypotenuse in this particular case both are like overlapping right so in that case if these two are equal in that case so cosine a could be one so at the most if if angle a is equal to zero right in that case b equals to c correct now if b is c then cos of a equals to one so cos of A equals to 1 if angle A equals to 0 degrees. Now, as this angle increases, I mean, as I make this triangle and, and revolve it like this, as the angle increases, right, as we see that this side A decreases. It shrinks. The edge base shrinks, right? It was here. It comes down, down, and further down. Do you see? It becomes smaller, smaller. And practically, it is zero when sine, when the angle is 90 degrees, correct? So as angle increases, we see as as angle A increases, 
right? Adjacent side decreases, right? It decreases, right? We say, we can say cos of A decreases, correct? Because there's more variation between the hypotenuse and A, right? And you know, hypotenuse in this circular motion where hypotenuse is kind of a radius of your circle and this is quarter of a circle here for you. Now, height remains same or the radius of the circle remains same, correct? But as compared to adjacent side A, it is much, much bigger, correct? So we say as A increases, cos A decreases, and ultimately, when A approaches 90 degrees, right, then cos A approaches 0 degrees, correct? So therefore, you will see for cosine of an angle, its value, maximum value of cos A can be maximum value of cos A is actually equals to 1. It has to be less than 1, correct? So that is what we can conclude from here. Now, the whole thing overflew over the tangent area, right? Let's not talk about tan. And it says, explain why the cosine of an angle in a right triangle is not greater than 1. So that is what we explain. But the tangent can have any value. Now, how come the tangent can have any value? Well, let's look into that part. Now, what is tan of A? So, tan of A will be, let's write down. So, tan of A will be opposite over adjacent. It's the ratio of two sides, right? It's the ratio of two sides. Now here, either side could be bigger, right? If the angle is small, then A will be smaller. If the angle is large, more than 45 degrees, A will be larger than B. And if angle is 45 degrees, then it will be an isosceles triangle and A and B will be same. In that case, tan A will be 1. And that's why A can have any value. Because the ratio of A over B can be any value, correct? In And A could be bigger or smaller, and there is no limit. A can approach 0. If A approaches 0, correct, in that case, tan A will approach 0. But if B approaches 0, that means if I am increasing the angle, and if B is approaching 0, then tan approaches infinite value, correct? Therefore, tan can have any value. However, cosine has limitation because in a triangle always C has to be greater than the adjacent side, right? Therefore, cosine can never be greater than 1. So I hope you understand and appreciate the concept, right? So that's how sine, cosine and tangent values are. Maximum value for sine and cosine is just 1. Reasoning for sine is also same as I explained for cosine. The only thing is, when we are talking about sine of an angle, instead of adjacent side, we are looking into the opposite side, right? But in any case, the opposite side will be much smaller than the hypotenuse, and therefore sine can never be greater than 1, correct? However, if the angle is 0, then sine is 0, but if angle is 90 degrees, sine is 1. So that scenario changes, right? For sine, let me add that here, so we should say sine of 0 degrees is equal to 0 and sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1 and anything in between is what sine can take. Okay. So that's how we conclude and I hope you remember now onwards that the maximum value of sine and cosine could always be 1, that is it. And for tan, we have no restrictions. Thank you.